That's right. Thanks, buddy. I want to go ahead and first thank ETH Denver. You guys are throwing an amazing conference. I want to thank Constellation Network, my team, co-founders, and uh, the best community in crypto. Appreciate you guys. I saw this guy chuckling up here because working with the uh, federal government is not all that exciting. But today I'm not here to just talk about all the cool stuff we're doing, but rather hopefully enable everybody here to walk away learning about entry points in which can impact your business that could be funded by the federal government. So hopefully this is uh, something that can impact all of you in a positive way. I'm not going to go through all of my accolades here because that's kind of stupid, but I did want to just show that I'm involved in quite a bit of stuff, whether it's through the blockchain lens or it's through the enterprise lens. Uh, but I just wanted to show this so you know that, that I do have the credentials and I'm not just some joker. So I am Benjamin Diggles. I'm the chief strategy officer and co-founder. That basically means I'm the business development guy handling consortia, academia, enterprise, federal, general partnerships, and so forth. So I got this uh, juicy QR code if you guys want to check out constellationnetwork.io and see a little bit more about what that is. But to understand what Constellation is, for those that have not heard about us yet, Constellation provides infrastructure that enables businesses and individuals to transact and conduct commerce in Web3. And while I know that's a very high in the sky uh, e explanation to bake it down for you decentralists, we are a base layer protocol, the world's first L0 protocol. We have a double layer consensus algorithm that is custom. Uh, we are a directed acyclic craft framework, and we, uh, op we operate a very robust ecosystem. Uh, with that ecosystem, we have our own Stargazer wallet, which is very similar to MetaMask, that allows you to conduct and transact our cryptocurrency DAG, DAG, after directed acyclic graph, fee-less and instantly, uh, we also have our own DeFi exchange that's been built on our core network, as well as we just recently last year acquired a data mining company, I'm sorry, a hardware sensor company that allows folks to um, validate data from a hardware sensor and get paid in cryptocurrency in real time. It's very cool stuff. Last shill plug is that we do have an accelerator that we coach companies to go from inception to token launch if they're interested in working in our ecosystem. That hopefully explains a little bit why we were one of the first two companies to successfully lock down a contract with the federal government. That was about two and a half years ago. The other company was Simba Chain. Want to give them a shout out. Big fan of those guys. So if you don't know Simba Chain, check them out. But we went for the jugular on this. And I don't have a federal background, and I'm not one to really praise the federal government. I'm, I think I'm a little bit more like everybody here, like not real stoked on the man. But uh, there is a chance here to really validate your technology. And why I'm very proud of this work that we've done so far is that we went straight for the core promises of what distributed ledger technology brings to the market. And that's really around immutable data, security, automation, fractionalized payments, all the stuff that everybody's here to celebrate as part of this conference, right? So right now I'm in that period of performance. It's pretty hardcore. Happy to talk about the details if anybody's interested in what we're doing. But this really proves out that this isn't just some fictitious technology, but that actually can create true accountability from the source all the way to the ingestion, no matter how data is being communicated. So with that, what, the reason why we went into federal is because as the BD guy, I was talking to, I literally feel like I've talked to every Fortune 500 company out there, and they were really scrutinizing blockchain. And I found out to my uh, surprise that the federal government is roughly about three times more um, adept at this stuff than the, the commercial space. So it doesn't matter if I'm talking to a Fortune 10 company, they would be, their engineer folks would be very skeptical, closed, they didn't want to be the first to jump in, they didn't like the idea of a public ledger and putting their data or their transactions on it. All very good reasons, so I'm not like trying to tell them to just catch up. But I get on the phone with the federal government, and these guys really understood uh, not only blockchain and DeFi, um, but really where this, this, this is, um, market is going. And so uh, the, the biggest difference is that the commercial side is really ROI uh, focused, right? Whereas when you look at the federal government, they care about impact. And this does uncover that we are working with the largest budget in the world, somewhere upwards of like 700, 800 billion dollars. And I don't, you know, I, I know that there's probably some differing opinions of what the federal government is and how you, if you like it or you don't. But there is a big opportunity for projects in this room to get involved that will not only benefit you, but I think benefit society and America at large. 
One of the proof points is that the White House just put out an executive order January 26 around how we're shifting all of our infrastructure in the federal government over to a zero trust infrastructure. And I've heard this from large prime contractors as well, that they're all in a big migration effort to make a zero trust infrastructure. And I think the term zero trust is a little misleading. Reminds me of the mid 2000s, we talked about real time and that could mean instantly to some people, that might mean in a couple seconds. And so zero trust really can be scrutinized pretty hardcore, just like decentralization. And I do love that folks here like to fact check what true decentralization is, right? So with this, the reason why I want to put this up is that this isn't like they're just kind of tipping their hat and interest in blockchain, but that they are starting to make it core to their, their, um, their architecture. And the reason why? No one trusts anybody. Not profound, right? Um, so today I want to call all blockchain projects. And it almost seems counterintuitive that I'm asking folks to compete against us in the federal government to get these solutions into the hands of those that can validate what you guys are building. And what's very interesting about this is that there's this thing called the SBIR. It stands for Small Business Innovation Research. And this is a fund that everybody who's a tax-paying American pays money to go into. And the reason they do this is that, that we can stimulate the economy with net new technology, specifically out of like Silicon Valley, to get in the hands of the government, but also just make um, some of these companies grow, correct? So $1.2 billion a year is sitting in this cash uh, bucket for companies to bid against on their solutions. And I'm gonna talk through a few reasons as why here in a second, but there's many, many different groups like this, and I'm gonna touch on what they mean. So these are not the sum of all the opportunities, but the SBIR is certainly the one that I would start with. So with this, they're called other transaction authorities. It's kind of gross, right? But these OTAs, the reason these exist, and this is kind of like, I would say, the X factor of this, this um, presentation, is that we, we live in a somewhat of a corrupt world, right? We've got lobbyists that are ensuring that, hey, if some need is happening in the federal government, that they're going to be the first in line, and they're going to be the first ones to say, you don't need any of that blockchain stuff. Just work with us, and so forth. Furthermore, working with the federal government sucks. It's hard, it's really hard. And so, you know, even yet Elon Musk at this thing um, at the end of last year, basically there was this big push from Silicon Valley saying, we're tired of it, time's running out. If you want our technology so bad, make it a lot easier to work with us because we're not gonna jump through all these hoops when it's easier to make money in the commercial side. So with that, you guys have technology and you need money. They have money, but they need technology. But the problem is there's been this big wall that really has thwarted folks from getting involved in this stuff. So with that, they created this program, the SBIR program. It hasn't been around that long, so we're kind of dealing with a little bit of a renaissance right now, and that's why I'm really pushing folks to get involved. And so they have limitations to apply, like you have to be a business that has less than 500 employees or certain less uh, revenue goals and so forth. Meaning that if you have like a Lockheed Martin, they can't bid on these things. They can't get involved in these contracts. So it's like they really are calling all of Silicon Valley and the folks that have innovation, innovative tools to get involved in this. So with that, I wanna just say why you should or shouldn't do government work, right? So. The first reason why you want to do and lean in is to validate your tech with a significant customer that funds you to build your roadmap. This is a big one, right? I'm not here to like slam accelerators. I just told you we would run one, but I'm not in incubators. But they often take a pound of flesh for a high risk involvement. They'll be like, great, we'll take 20% of your company for 60 grand and like, we'll see how you do. And that's a pretty hardcore environment. I don't think any of them have, I guess, uh, returns that are that low. But the point being is that then they also walk away with a you know, chunk of your, your, your IP and equity and so forth. Whereas the government won't take any IP. They're really good about this. I know trust the government is not necessarily the most popular thing right now, but uh, they're really good about not touching your IP um, and they don't take any equity. So they don't have a skin in the game. So you have a chance to value, validate your technology with some pretty hardcore use cases that you can put a pretty cool logo on that will show that you're actually moving in the right direction without having to lose control of your business. You wanna show some early revenue during your development roadmap. These folks will help you build your roadmap. And it's called a thing called TRL, which is technical readiness level. They will entertain companies that are at the ideation phase. You don't 
don't have to have production product, which means if you have a technical roadmap that you can align with this program, they will pay you to build that as long as that you are injecting value against their mission impact needs. The third reason is you want to contribute to a cross-pollinate within the federal ecosystem. This means you may have a passion for federal, you want to be a contractor, you want to get involved, and that's not for everybody, right? I just want to say that straight up. But don't get involved if you just want quick money and a logo. You will you'll get eaten alive, right? And that doesn't mean that you'll get rejected by the host so much, but you might get in over your head. Like, when I won our first contract, I was really stoked. But then about 10 minutes later, I had a panic attack because I was like, wow, I actually have to deliver on this. I have to deliver on this now. You, uh, if you don't intend on being a contractor or not in it for the long haul, don't do it. Like, it's only really for those that are seriously about making impact within these things, right? And if you can't fill the required dedicated resources to, to do it properly, I've seen this in a lot of companies where they're like, hey, who do we have that's good at writing proposals? Let's just throw one in and see what happens. You really need somebody dedicated that's gonna really lead the charge on, on these activities. So, so this is where I'm gonna leave it, which is uh, encourage everybody to get activated, right? Again, a lot of us don't trust the government and I, the idea that I'm working with the DOD, my friends just roll their eyes and they think I'm a crazy person. But what I've learned is we do live in a paradox. That means there's good people and bad people, and what matters is the energy you bring to the landscape, right? And I believe that there's a chance that you can actually get the best of all worlds here. And you might be pleasantly surprised that there's some wonderful people that work for the government. Uh, so my encouragement is to start at SBIR. They have all these videos that teach you how to go through these multi-phase processes to make it very easy. Again, this is their, their North Star, is making it as easy as possible as an other transaction authority to bring you into their ecosystem. So with Constellation, again, this is my one shows, you can join our community, you can install our wallet, um, we have the ability to stake nodes within our DeFi platform, and we even have the ability for you to buy one of these hardware sensors that will validate data and pay in cryptocurrency in real time, truly bridging the promises of distributed ledger and the real world. But again, I just hopefully can inspire everybody here that there's pockets of money through a multi-phase program that will reward you anywhere from hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars to help you build your roadmap without giving out equity that will benefit your business and hopefully your fellow Americans in the world. So that's my, uh, that's my talk and I really appreciate you guys all having me here.